teach them so that uh, in acute care they're going to they're be highly relying on their biceps because they still have their biceps at C7. You get to C5, you got biceps, but you just have shoulders. That's probably not a realistic patient. So the bottom line is this is going to require the head of the bed going up and going down, and uh, it's also going to require Dan using the side rails to help pull him to his side and using his biceps as larger muscles. When we get to a pay, uh, to a situation where we have a patient who's uh, more outpatient and they're stable, that's when we actually teach them ways that they can actually um, use their body to basically put themselves in an advantage to go to sideline, okay, as opposed to using the bed rails. And uh, so that's that's another time. All right. Uh, so for the most part. Um, we want Dan to be in a position, and this is not something that's going to happen in a one treatment situation. This is part of uh, a lot of what you do as part of your, uh, a good part of your treatment with someone that you might be dealing with relative to trying to help them become more dependent with lower body and upper body dressing. So, um, thing is, Dan's lying down. Uh, he's going to need to get to a, uh, do the bed controls here. In this case, he may be, he doesn't have real good hand use. He's probably going to have some kind of an adaptation to his bed or a corner that's going to allow him to do this. We need to get the head of the bed up the entire way. We think, if you want to reposition yourself, go ahead. Okay. All right. So the thing is, uh, what do we know about people with spinal cord injury? Especially up in the cervical region, do we have any abdominals? No. So you, you can't you can't really lean forward. There will become a point where these pot these people get so in command of their body and what muscles actually you they can use and what muscles they can't that there is an adaptation process that occurs over time that they will be able to lean forward. For the most part, right now we're acute. Uh, there's no leaning forward. Okay. So what I'm going to ask Dan to do is we're going to don these pants and. Uh, what Dan needs to do is take his arms, again, his biceps, and let's just say you're at C7, which means you have shoulders, you have biceps, C7, you have kicked in your triceps, and you have gross finger flexion and extension. You have no intrinsics, okay, but you have gross, so that does mean you're going to be able to uh, handle the uh, waistline here. So what Dan needs to do, though, is he needs to reach underneath his knee with both arms, and, and particularly, okay, he's going to, again, difficult to lean forward. Um, okay, try and use as much of your biceps as possible, so as far as you can get under Pull that leg up, excellent. Those arms under there. So once you start getting it up further, those arms slip right underneath that knee. You want to get that thing pulled up. There you go, excellent. And then you're going to want to get it crossed, crossing that leg. And it's a lot of effort to get it done. So but this is going to begin the process of lower body dressing. kind of appreciate some of the hip flexibility that starts to come out with these people because they pull it up all the way and then they cross it so they can actually reach. Um, in Dan's case, you know, he's, he's doing the best he can. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, he's doing the best he can, uh, but again, what gets really, really challenging is they don't have that trunk flexion. Um, so go ahead and see if you can't just, your leg's just going to fall out in that case. Okay, now, let's do the same thing with the other leg. So the whole idea then is getting that hip flexion and that external rotation, that's going to be huge. So you can pull
pull this up and actually reach that, that foot. <coughs> Dan is a great example of how one person is going to be that much more challenging than the next because of uh, flexibility that, that usually comes. Okay, and now use your faker muscle. There you go. Excellent. As best as you can. Good. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now we need to go down into a supine position. Makes two of us. All right. Um, now what Dan needs to do as best as he can, he's going to need to stick his arm between under there. Good, excellent. You can get up to here. Perfect. Good, good. All right. And as best as you can, you're going to now use your bicep strength to pull you to your side. I'm sorry. Keep the legs in the back. Okay, just like this. Yep. So now we're working on getting these things up the up past your hips. Okay. Yep. So we're going to use this arm. Pull this waist yeah, up. Again, like this. Um, now you have gross finger flexion. We're going to give you that much. So if you probably just over okay. the top. Yeah, you just take your time. That's, you work on, uh, again, they're not able to bridge. Uh, so this is often a process of going from one side to another side, back and forth, back and forth. Dan got a pretty good swoop there. All right, now, <laughs> come back here. Good. Back through here. Good. Here. Got her, Dan. All right. Go ahead. So the uh, process would be now, what do you think we're going to need to do to doff these things, take them off? Probably keep them supine, right? And then we just reverse the process that we just did. He's going to have to come to the side and now doff them. You can kind of appreciate here how <coughs> until you start to master C6, you don't have triceps. Again, some of these people, uh, they can stabilize their scapula on their shoulders, they can stabilize this distal part, and they can stay, then they can lock their elbow and they can get extension through their shoulder, okay? For the most part, early on, unless you have elbow extension, this is extremely difficult. So, I'm just going to ask, I would ask Dan to reverse that process, come to a sideline position, he works on getting them off, and uh, why don't we go ahead and do that since you're so eager. <laughs> Now, head of the bed up. <laughs> this gets to be a challenge you're working with your person. I can easily say to Dan, just scoops up. See exactly what happens. <laughs> If you have triceps, the chance they can reposition themselves. Uh, obviously, we have the bed a little bit lower, but anyhow. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can't reverse it. not a perfect scenario, so that's why I didn't know that wasn't going to help you out. Um, would that be ideal? Is that how they do it? Just keep lifting right up? And yeah, it would be one of the problems. 
problem-solving situations that you might find yourself in. Again, selection of clothing is going to be imperative that we that you kind of appreciate. Um, not putting on tight jeans is something that's probably not going to be a goal, but some nice uh, loose-fitting slacks. Um, all right. 